So, hello everyone, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Gianluca Dianese. I'm the vice chair of the uh, Fire uh, Energy Mission Support Committee. And uh, um, I wanted to welcome you on this uh, uh, deep dive session where we will discuss uh, uh, with a number of uh, uh, extremely uh, cool speakers the digitalization of energy systems and their operations. And then we will also try to look at the role of aggregators uh, and the use of digital twins in the world of energy uh, of today. Um, I had the pleasure today to guide you through this uh, virtual event. Uh, and my uh, fantastic uh, panelists uh, coming from uh, uh, almost all of the world uh, today will be uh, definitely uh, entertain you with uh, topics of extreme relevance. Um, Besides providing you with insights on the challenges and opportunities uh, that the uh, energy sector or the smart energy sector because of the way it's changing, <clears throat> um, I will also... Uh, try to uh, help uh, you together with the speakers uh, to, to learn some uh, interesting tips or relevant tips um, from uh, uh, free use cases, which will be presented in the second uh, part of, the, uh, of our afternoon. Uh, and hope that this will uh, help you uh, better understand uh, how you could successfully start, set up, uh, run and grow uh, your open source projects uh, and, uh, and solutions uh, that are addressing smart energy uh, use cases. Um, so uh, today, what our objective is, is to try to share uh, a little more about uh, the digitalization of energy and the role of the aggregators um, and of the digital twin as a, as a concept and as a tool uh, in shaping the journey towards uh, uh, our clean, uh, uh, our clean uh, future. Um, well, I'll stop top, uh, with this and I'll uh, really start introducing the outstanding speakers of today. Uh, from California, uh, very early in the morning, uh, I welcome Shuli Goodman, that is the founder and executive director of the uh, Linux Foundation for Energy program, or uh, LFE, as we call it. Uh, from Switzerland, we have Christian Jakobson. Uh, who is the Vice President uh, Energy Intelligence at uh, Fortum. Um, we do have uh, also Vincenzo Croce from Italy. Um, and uh, Vincenzo is uh, a very well-known uh, uh, figure for, uh, for all of you. And he's been working on a number of very interesting smart energy projects uh, uh, within the uh, R&D Department of uh, Engineering, Engineering and Informatica. Uh, as I said, uh, in Italy. Uh, we have then uh, the um, uh, Professor Monti, um, that is the chair of the Smart Energy uh, Committee, uh, but is also the director of the Institute for Automation of Complex Power Systems at the Aachen uh, University. Um, Andreas Fechner from Germany again, uh, who is uh, uh, working at CBB Software. And uh, last but not least, uh, uh, a friend of mine, Professor Aidar Mechit, uh, who is a, a professor of urban energy and mobility solution at the University of Applied Sciences uh, in uh, Bochum. So um, after introducing the, the, the speakers, uh, I, uh, I have to, uh, to welcome and thank the organization that has been helping us uh, setting up this uh, uh, event, uh, meaning our media partners. Um, they have been really incredible in uh, supporting us throughout the organization and they will be continuing doing this outstanding job uh, in the next uh, few days. Uh, let me quote them, uh, business reporters, uh, business reporters, sorry, Cities Forum, Compass List, uh, Our Future Water, Renewable Matter, Smart Cities World, and last but not least, uh, Zoom uh, Global uh, Cities. So a few housekeeping rules uh, before uh, starting. So um, everybody, even the speakers, please uh, uh, Try to keep your mic uh, muted. Whenever it's time, we will let you know. 
uh, whenever one of you attendee, uh, attending the, the event wants to uh, raise a question, we will, uh, uh, in case, just unmute of mic. Um, uh, this is, I would say, uh, as I was mentioning, a live event, so uh, ask questions, put questions uh, in, uh, in the chat. Um, and then uh, we'll we'll try to take care of your uh, uh, questions in a, in a Q and A uh, manner as much as we as we can. Um, I uh, just uh, would like also to to mention um, that um, you can continue engaging with us. We will have several uh, opportunities to share all of our social media uh, channels and. Uh, um, we uh, will uh, also try to share uh, recording and uh, information and slides uh, uh, either through the uh, Fiverr's YouTube channel or any other uh, tool uh, uh, that um, we, we usually um, set up for, uh, for uh, sharing information during these events. Um, what to say uh, more? So once again, a very well uh, warm welcome to all of you and uh, let's jump into uh, the first uh, of the uh, speeches of today uh, a keynote uh, uh, from uh, uh, Dr. Shuli Goodman. Uh, Shuli uh, has uh, nearly three decades of experience uh, in providing governance support uh, uh, to multinational corporations, startups, uh, uh, and a uh, uh, huge multi-stakeholder organization overseeing um, high visibility or high risk initiatives. Uh, she has spent uh, the early part of her career enabling uh, some of the world's largest companies uh, to uh, become ready for uh, the world of internet. Uh, but I mean, now she is definitely uh, focused in uh, setting up uh, our lives for the future as a digital first uh, uh, cross-industry uh, um, uh, environment uh, where the uh, electricity sector uh, definitely takes uh, a very relevant uh, role. Um, Shuli has a doctorate in organizational systems, focus on innovation and the energy transition. And uh, um, she's been doing an outstanding job in uh, uh, launching, setting up, uh, nurturing, and really boosting the work uh, uh, of the Linux uh, Foundation for Energy program. Uh, and I had the pleasure to work with her for the last two years. Uh, so I am really happy uh, to welcome her and to uh, give her the floor. Shuli? <laughs> Etienne Luca, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Um, I just popped into the chat window um, the presentation. So I'm going to start my timer and I'm on. Uh, at the heart of LF Energy is the power of together. This question or this statement, the future is here, it's just unevenly distributed, um, was something that really launched me in a journey of inquiry to understand how it is that we are going to move through uh, the next 30 years and ostensibly um, move through what I would refer to as the great transition. So I'm going to talk more about um, kind of how the future emerges and 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 hopefully um, give you some sense of of how we're thinking about it. I want to thank the Fireware team. Every single event that I've ever been a part of really requires an army of people to coordinate and collaborate and to do all the um, big stuff and the little stuff. I want to thank Ulrich for his towering leadership literally and figuratively, uh, Juan Ho, Bao, Alberto, uh, Gianluca. And um, my first meeting with Ulrich was with Anto, um, Antonello Monti, uh, professor who's going to be talking later, who has now become the TAC chair or my technical advisory council chair um, with LF Energy. And so I'm very grateful for his uh, partnership in helping to LF Energy. 
So this question, what did you do during the great transition? It came to me when um, maybe about 15 years ago and it really launched me in the direction. I had an imaginary conversation with my unborn grandchildren and they asked me this question and the idea of, see, of saying nothing, but I was worried, um, felt absolutely, um, it's like something I couldn't do. Uh, so it launched me, um, there's a bell in the background. Is there something I need to know about? Are we okay? Okay. Uh, just don't see your slides anymore, but you can. We see you and we hear you well. You can't see the slides. Okay. Surely Sorry about you... that. Yeah, if you want, I can jump in and try to uh, share the slides if you have, if you're facing any d issues. Okay, you no, I think I'm okay. Oh, you're okay. Yeah, you're back. Okay, I'm back on. Okay, so when we start to talk about power systems, um, they really are leading the global decarbonization effort. This is a diffusion curve as an innovation person. Um, I look at the diffusion curves really carefully because when you when you really want to make a transformative change, you want to focus on creating the conditions um, for the innovators, the unicorns, the people at the, at the very beginning of an, a diffusion curve to be successful. If we transform power systems, then we can transform transportation, our built environment, trucking, and, and onward. We will create enormous uh, momentum. So, we only have 10 years. And what we have to do is remove um, carbon from uh, our, our uh, energy systems that power buildings, transportation, um, and that this is going to provide us with 75% of the reduction in CO2 emissions that we need. The design challenges are that we don't have enough time, we have enough resources, we need interoperability, and no vendor lock-in. Those are really dr driving how I think about um, where are the leverage points for accelerating decarbonization. And for me, it lends with open source. So I was asked to kind of give a high level, well, what is open source? Um, it, it, you know, I think most of you probably know, but source code that anyone can expect, uh, inspect, modify, and enhance. From a control perspective, developers have access and can examine the code. From a security perspective, developers can fix, update, and upgrade the code. From a community perspective, open source inspires users and, de and developers to form around it. Um, it is the heart of interoperability by incorporating open standards, and providing the de facto implementation of the standard, and it's a leveraged development environment or a shared development environment. It enables collective investment. So therefore, it is faster, cheaper, and more secure. And that's where LF Energy comes in. And LF Energy is kind of a sister foundation to Fireware. And we are focused entirely on the um, developing open source, open frameworks, reference architectures, reference implementations, and an open ecosystem of complementary projects. And um, these are our members to date. Um, we have been growing uh, enormously and beginning to attract um, uh, indus the industrials, the OEMs, and the hyperscaling businesses. We are housed in the Linux Foundation, and the Linux Foundation is um, really the home of the kernel, uh, the Linux kernel, and 425 other projects. Um, within the month, it's going to be 475, probably by the end of the year, 500. So we are growing enormously, and it's a template that is used over and over again with regards to the charter, the, the goods and uh, the shared services. Open source isn't slowing down anytime soon. Knowing where we are in the diffusion curve, I think is important, um, which is we're just about to hit takeoff. So the real question is which projects really matter? And I think that that's the same 
a question that Bioware has, which is which of the project matter because those are the ones that we want to be building ecosystems around. And what I find really um, heartening and why I feel so committed to the Fireware Foundation is that we must demonstrate the power of together. We must do this together. There's no way to get there um, alone. Uh, these are projects today. You can go onto the LF Energy website. You can see those um, projects. And uh, I don't have enough time to go into it, but we have videos and the GitHubs and Wiki. Everything is present and visible. So the way the Linux Foundation works, I think, is somewhat similar to Fireware, is we really look at it as an 80-20 rule, leverage development and open source ecosystem, uh, services that sit underneath it, um, and that we, we are seeking to accelerate a marketplace by competing on products and services. Rather than actually uh, competing on, on the plumbing or competing on you know, the underlying infrastructure of our you know, evolving power systems, what we want to be doing is competing on the high value um, that's going to allow us to begin to move at the speed of technology. We are building a grid that's far beyond our ability to intellectually manage. I think all of us have this image of power system operators sitting in a control room with, you know, 12 screens and then up on all, you know, another wraparound screens. And that's impossible, actually, um, for a single human being to be able to track. Um, and this is only going to get more complex because of sector coupling. And again, this is where Fireware and the Linux Foundation can really work cooperatively because we are looking at buildings, transportation, industry, water, agriculture. Um, and these are the building blocks of the grid of the future. 5G, edge, IoT, cloud native, distributed computing, control, orchestration, choreography, AI, ML, and of course, digital twins. And at the heart of that is data. And what we're doing in essence is we're networking electrons. Now electrons are physical things that require a surface to move. Um, but what we're being able to do now we couldn't do 130 or 140 years ago when power systems were first designed, is that we can network the metadata about an electron. And what that's doing is producing a tsunami of data that is coming at power system network operators. The problem is, we have a log jam and uh, that log jam is demonstrated to me over and over and over again. And, um, and you know, I, I live in a tree and am very familiar with trees. And this image of a log jam um, doesn't happen so much on the planet anymore. Um, but when we were building our cities in the 1800s and the 19, early 900s, we would throw the logs in a river and then the logs would get stuck. And there's no delicate way to pick apart a log jam. You actually have to blow it up. And it's my belief that open source and uh, transparency and openness actually is the thing that's going to get this river moving. Isolation and going it alone are no longer viable. We have to do this together. Um, yesterday, I was in a meeting uh, with a standards body and, you know, it, 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 I, it is so important that we build on top of standards, but that standards bodies also open up their user licenses so that we can use them to fundamentally build the software that is going to enable this great transition. And so we have to get out of our self-centered interests and really begin to think as if we need to move at the speed of the urgency that faces us. I live in California. California is under extreme drought right now, as is the entire west of the United States um, because of drought. And it's an extreme drought. We're at maybe 20, 25% of our water capacity, yet we provide an enormous amount of the food on the planet. So um, 
we are all this together and we are only going to get out of it together. We, we need mass collaboration. That is what the Linux Foundation is about. Uh, please join us. Um, our links are right there. And thank you very much to everyone. Uh, a great conference. And it is an honor to have the opportunities to speak uh, to you all. Surely the honor is ours. Uh, and we we thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Uh, it's so Aww. early, wherever you are. So <laughs> for you being with us, I mean, we, we really appreciate this. It, you're outstanding and fantastic as always. And thank you for your uh, very inspiring words. Um, it it sets us in the right mood, I think, to um, to look at what uh, may, be, may be coming next and how we should be better uh, address it and uh, uh, in order to do this I have uh, I would say two illustrious speakers now um, starting from uh, uh, Christian Jakobson uh, Christian is uh, uh, and Christian if you want to start uh, sharing slides you may do so um, Christian is a, is a former colleague, a friend with whom I talk about uh, the future of our kids, sometimes even late at night, like yesterday, for instance. And uh, um, he has been appointed in March of 2020 um, to lead the data science and analysis uh, uh, unit at Fortum where he is uh, uh, vice president uh, uh, of an entity that is uh, uh, really focused on um, uh, strengthening the ability of Fortum as a, uh, one of the biggest uh, uh, energy uh, companies uh, in Europe uh, to, to jump into the, the digitalization bandwagon and uh, uh, somehow being able to empower a vision of uh, uh, future energy trading and asset optimization. Um, I will be uh, uh, having a small part in his presentation. Um, and uh, uh, what uh, we would like to share with you today is a vision of what uh, the energy company uh, of uh, the near future, because 2030 is behind the corner. <coughs> Uh, maybe and uh, uh, really I think that the subtitle is uh, uh, quite inspiring so where uh, information meets energy who will be the player of uh, the future will it be a Google who uh, is an energy also an energy company or will it be uh, an energy company Company like Fortum uh, that builds on uh, uh, digital expertise and uh, uh, leverage uh, leverage on the work of uh, uh, teams like the one that uh, Christian has been uh, setting up uh, uh, in uh, uh, in Zurich and across uh, and across Europe. So if you may move to the to the next slide, I wanted to just introduce some some thoughts that may be helping us uh, in uh, uh, capturing uh, the juice of what Christian will be sharing with us. Um, and um, one of the major uh, issue in uh, uh, the way the energy industry is uh, somehow reshaping itself is uh, is being able to understand uh, what will be happening and. Uh, what will be happening is, will we have enough wind? We will have enough sun. Uh, we'll be able to cope with the need of industry of, uh, uh, and uh, I would say very hot summer uh, that will uh, require our ACs to be on uh, forever. Uh, but I mean, these are things that you all, you all know. But uh, let's, let's look at um, other aspects, like for instance, Think about pension funds investing in uh, uh, clean energy and in, in big uh, endeavors uh, related to uh, companies willing uh, to go green. Or think about uh, insurance companies deciding uh, to stop um, um, supporting uh, fossil fuel uh, uh, businesses or fossil businesses in general. 
Um, think about the investment that are being done and that have been done in uh, in countries like uh, uh, Germany, for instance, or across Europe. Um, when you look at uh, offshore wind generation and so on, and and look at how politicians, especially in this uh, part of the world, but now back also in the United States, are doing in really trying to. Uh, be more active, more present in uh, uh, shaping a future uh, that is, uh, I would say, uh, less draining on resources and more uh, trying to find a space for us in the world without having a negative impact. Um, so uh, while there is some, some awareness, there are good signs that are making us think something is going to change and it's going in the right direction. On the other end, uh, you look at what is happening in terms of uh, uh, the, the extremely, I would say, uh, troubling sign of uh, uh, climate change. Uh, they are becoming more and more visible. I mean, you cannot ignore them un unless you uh, somehow are in some political parties but really they are there they are there to be seen they are affecting our lives uh, and so you would say well i mean this, the route that we have to take seems to be i would say quite easy right uh, if we have to bet on the future it's a green future it's a clean future um, so it looks like we know what we need to uh, put in place uh, in order to to get there uh, but the point is, uh, uh, what about uh, the businesses who are impacted and what about the businesses who should be accompanying us uh, in this journey? Um, and uh, the message for them is, uh, uh, guys, you need to be ready to adapt. You need to be ready to, uh, to change. And uh, you need to be changed because uh, uh, we need to really have a picture of what the future may look like or will look like. And with this, I will hand over to Christian, who will definitely be much more inspiring than me. Christian, the floor is yours. Thank, thank you, Gianluca, and greetings from Switzerland. Uh, I'm going to make some obvious statements, probably clear to each and everyone, but we need to put them on the table to be able to conclude and finally point out what is still difficult problems to manage what is still uncertain, and also point out what's important and what's not. So what it will look like 2030, well, it will be three times more capacity of renewables. That's an enormous change in itself and will have quite big implications on mainly everything concerning energy. Uh, electrification and e of immobility and heating is coming, and we know what it will bring. Of course, less carbon emissions if we feed them with green energy. So we will have an increase in the demand. We also know that uh, fast charging in particular will uh, lead to problems for the grid. We already see it when we have 3% electric cars on the streets. How are we going to be able to make that scale? Also, of course, we, we can make use of the flexibility in the in heat pumps and also use those electric cars as basically batteries with wheels. So there are lots of opportunities here, but also lots of, of channel, uh, challenges. Also the fact that we're gonna have many small distributed energy entities, that is actually already true. And I'm trying to, to uh, nail that down by this uh, statement here. The biggest electricity provider in Germany today is the private citizen. 1.8 million PVs on rooftops providing on average 20% of the electricity demand. They are the biggest ones. And that is just going into the grid when it's not consumed directly uncontrolled. We need to bring that to the markets. We need to bring that under control. So it's a challenge. So what features do we have? And, and of course, the features here completely are conditioned on the fact that the grid needs to be balanced every second. So we're gonna have this intermittent production, three times more capacity in 10 years from now. Sometimes we're gonna to have too much, sometimes too little. On average, possibly what we need. So of course you can say, just put enough storage and problem solved. That's how a physicist like me looks at it. Just put it in, easily controlled. But that will always be too expensive. So that's not gonna be 
a solution. We need to be smart. We need to put something smart in place between the intermittent production and the rather predictable uh, consumption there. So that is where information needs to meet energy to manage this really, really big and challenging control problem. So using flexibility on the consumption side by postponing and advancing things, and of course, using existing storage capacity, both chemical and, and thermal in, in industry mainly. So what are the conclusions here? It's gonna be look very different. And when I now conclude, I, I sit in a big energy company, Fortum, third biggest in Europe, third biggest CO2 neutral company in, in Europe with the aim to go completely CO2 neutral by 2035. Very, very ambitious. And me and my team's role is to provide a technology to, to enable this. So when I see all these small distributed energy units, connectivity, standardization, and we have started a collaboration with Nokia and especially Nokia Bell Labs, because we know what we are good at we need to complement with others who are good at the other things missing, typically connectivity here. The grid will be turned upside down. Uh, we need to do edge data and compute capacity. We need to have that as part of the solution. We are building that in as we speak. The flexibility and the storage at the edge, for me, that means aggregation. That means aggregation. And this, I put it in red, difficult. Are we talking about distributed optimization? Are we talking about Minkowski adding with polytopes or xenotopes? It is a very difficult problem as I see it. Really happy to get feedback on this uh, from others listening, working on the same problems. Uh, when it comes to mitigating the intermittency with aggregated flex and storage, for me, this is all about forecasting and optimization. And that is where my team has been putting the emphasis for many years now. And I think we are really, really at the edge here. And I'm gonna come back to that a bit here. And then last but not least, uh, sometimes often forgotten, the, the markets as designed today, they're clearly not fit for purpose. Uh, they cannot handle uh, time dependencies well enough. They're simply not fast enough. And once you are in delivery of what you had promised, there is no way of fixing or balancing. So really clever algorithms uh, to be able to do clearing uh, bilaterally will be important. This is difficult. So understanding how to manage information now is as important as managing energy. It's all about data management and data science. We heard before, it's all about data. Otherwise we are blind, but there is a big portion of data science that needs to be put in place. <laughs> And now I'm going to drive through forecasting optimization is all you need. And I call that the universal decision machine. So we're not really talking AI. We are not even just talking machine learning. We're really talking about the advancements made in stochastic optimization over the last 10 years as a key ingredient. So what we are building, a simplified architecture that looks like this. We call it the energy backbone of course, uh, with analogy to telecommunication backbone. It is at the bottom a data management layer, of course, being streaming capable and event oriented. So the machine can react by itself to whatever is needed. Uh, but then on top of this, we have the data science layer and it's two main modules, forecasting and optimization to manage the life cycle of these models. In our machinery today, we are soon reaching over 1,000 forecasting models in operation, then seamlessly attached to all the optimization problems we need to solve. This is the core of, of what we're doing as a big uh, energy company. And we're doing it for the existing assets of Fortum with the aim to go to external megawatts next year. Forecasting optimization, this is Bellman's equation, 70 years old or something. This is just to illustrate how forecasting and optimization is, is intimately uh, related. So 
we have the immediate reward by the decisions you take right now dependent on the state you're in but they need to be combined with what the future might give so so we make a probability weighted summary of a possible future and possible value outcomes and that is where the forecasting comes in and of course it needs to be stochastic so stochastic forecasting combined with stochastic optimization this is the machine we we put in place so now we're back to to Gianluca and and me together to to explore a bit the energy ecosystem so Gianluca please go ahead well um i think that what uh this image the, the one that you're seeing on the screen uh, can can raise in terms of uh, images in our minds is really a, a very weird combination of uh, big and small you see uh, cities and communities uh, you see uh, industry the big energy producers uh, you see an old and a new world uh, small and big, everything that somehow is supposed to be coming together uh, to uh, to design something uh, something new, to design something new that needs to be uh, to be sustainable. Uh, as Christian was mentioning before, um, there is a lot of space for big cooperation, and these big cooperations uh, are the ones that may be helping the small. Uh, and we will have Vincenzo in a few minutes who will be talking about uh, uh, energy communities, um, which are becoming part, aggregating their, their strength uh, and their flexibility, uh, intended inability to change very quickly, not in, in energy uh, technical terms, uh, in order to be a, a relevant, an extremely relevant part of uh, uh, our uh, clean energy path, as Christian was uh, uh, was mentioning. Uh, I think a couple of weeks ago, over 70% of the energy produced uh, in one of the biggest European member states uh, was coming from uh, renewable sources. So there is a lot that will be changing. Uh, there is a lot that uh, will uh, uh, the, the, the the big players will uh, will have to to look in, into in order to. Uh, somehow uh, design new paths, new ways of uh, uh, working together. The energy ecosystem of the future will definitely be different. Uh, it's giving us signs that it needs to be different if it wants to be sustainable. And with this, I mean, I will leave uh, uh, Christian uh, the, the final word uh, for you. Yeah, the final word for me will be short and, and direct. You see there is something in the center here called an energy backbone. We, we are trying to put the machinery in place to be able to connect to all these uh, big and small, old and new devices. But we are completely aware and open about partnering up and sharing things and having open interfaces. We know, as was pointed out by the first speaker here very, very perfectly, we should not try to own this ourselves or, or try to solve this in isolation. We, we need to partner up and collaborate because we need to make sure we fight climate change well thank you thank you thank you christian and uh, uh, what best uh, um, uh, i would say uh, bridge for vincenzo uh, who will be now uh, talking to us about uh, uh, a topic that is extremely dear to me uh, but I mean, um, just just a few words about him because uh, we've been knowing each other uh, since some time now. I mean, you, you see him uh, as as a very young, very fresh, but in, he's been uh, instrumental in the activities of the R and D lab of engineering uh, since uh, the early 2000s, if I'm not mistaken, when he was really small, uh, a kid. I mean. Um, and uh, uh, his focus has always been in developing ICT for energy efficiency um, and uh, uh, is definitely uh, one of uh, uh, the uh, best scientists I know uh, focused on topics related to energy districts uh, and uh, uh, similar uh, topics. Um, Vincenzo. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, okay, perfect. Okay, I can share the screen. Okay. Yes. 
see my screen? Yeah. Oh, okay, perfect. Yeah, okay. Jaluka, you was talking or can, can I stop? You can go ahead, Virginia. Uh, okay, okay. Thank you so much, Jaluka, for the introduction and thank you. Good morning, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, this this uh, this part of, of the the meeting, I'm actually uh, taking this chance to shape a little bit more the 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 vision that uh, Christian and uh, Jaluka already introduced in in the context of what is happening in in the power and the energy domain in which way this uh, this kind of context is is changing and which way we we need to to take all the issues that are risen up uh, the one that uh, was introduced is that uh, i really like the, this kind of of description is that this kind of uh, of context of domain is switching from a, a typical design that was top down conceived decades uh, decades ago and now it's uh, it's tackling the the, the bottom up uh, uh, reason up phenomenons were distributed uh, production and uh, uh, different consumption behaviors and different consumption models are going to spreading uh, uh, wider and wider and this is something that this system in, in some way has to 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 take also the the experience i'm talking today it's what we we did in, in a period that, that started years ago and uh, today i'm talking about uh, a program uh, with focus in different projects but two main projects that i, I will i will report you in, in a uh, the, the slide later but the, the main concept is that this scenario is already changing and more and more the the forecast is to very rapid changing and this Buddha net, network are part of the revolution revolution they are asked to, to play a completely new role and the cooperation among the different players different actors uh, it's definitely becoming mandatory and uh, uh, on the different actors are taking different rules or their balance is, is changing time by time and some new actors uh, are risen up like the 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 role of the the presumers the customers that actually now are not only consumer but are producing and are producing with their distributed uh, equipment uh, that are very uh, are renewable uh, energy production side and uh, unpredictable and uh, are uh, tackling also the, the issues of different presumer and so what we we experimented in in this in our experience is try to to identify the way we can have those actors uh, as a, a very active actors they are often they are not so big and but they are many so many and so according to the, the concept very Old concept was still valid. It's a long tail concept where there are so many that if we are able to aggregate, if we are able to optimize the the, the usage or the interaction with the with the presumer, what we can have it's a very powerful tool for the helping the the power balancing and the, the grid the stability and maintenance. And so the the point is that uh, as a Christian remarked storage is one option but it maybe it's very expensive and as also life cycle of storage devices is something that we, we are still in the discussion because uh, chemical elements that are used are actually an impact on the environment but we we can have more force on on the part of the optimization demand response program are really powerful tools that we, we can use but the point in this case in which way to support the interaction of, of this kind of actors in the demand response programs which why which kind of mechanism to involve them to engage them to keep them in the system and this one is something that we experimented with some specific tools that we, we designed and we developed and experimented and we are carrying on in, in this direction with a digital twin support in order to have more precise modeling of their behavior and more precise uh, forecasting and uh, simulation of what what the dynamics among those players can 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 be applied and this part the flexibility market is is one of the main role 
we 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 approach it energy trading flexibility market and uh, virtual power plant as main use cases you will see next slides and the point is which mechanism to involve them do we want to to still uh, stay on the incentives is something that may work but may have some problems so do we have some different kind of mechanism to have uh, the presumers involved the the experience today i'm reporting is essentially based on two projects that uh, we are coordinating i am personally the coordinator of both of them and we have also many other projects that uh, contribute to this program and the two projects are a dream project that is actually going to 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 close the project this june so this month it's uh, uh, more than three years uh, uh, project is 42 months project that uh, we run during the, the previous period and we are capitalizing the result of experimentation and design tool and so on and uh, we are carrying on on the, on the bright project that it's exploiting what was already achieved in terms of knowledge in terms of tools in terms of understanding of the market and extending this perspective with a particular focus on increase the community level engagement uh, increase the focus on the consumer on the engagement the one that uh, also Jaluka referred to that's uh, uh, local community energy community is something that we want to approach as the 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 group of presumers that can be coordinated can be optimized in order to offer a very relevant uh, uh, support to the to the network our focus initially was on, 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 as I said, on this demand response ecosystem. Uh, ecosystem is a very, very important concept that was also introduced at the beginning of today's session because the point is that we started from concept of platform, concept of environment, but actually the idea that can, can survive in this kind of context is the one where ecosystem with different players actually can play their role and can have advantages for a, a, a win-win situation where everybody is able to identify one advantage in its business in, in this context. We identified three main uh, use cases, three macro use cases where we we, we address it. The, the use cases related to the flexibility market already mentioned as one of the, the, the demand response program that we, we can exploit in order to optimize the network, in order to optimize and uh, alleviate the, the local network constraints. The other is uh, it's a energy trading marketplace that it's uh, conceived as a peer-to-peer -peer energy trading marketplace, conceived as an interaction among the different presumers, but actually is offering also the possibility to aggregators to, to operate in this market. And then the virtual power plant uh, considered as a virtual power plant offered by the coalition of uh, energy community, coalition of uh, uh, energy presumers that can operate, that can be uh, grouped uh, in a dynamic way. Each time one, problem one issue is identified we the system is able to identify potential coalition with some parameters some benefits that each coalition can bring and then for example the aggregator is able to to identify which one is the is the the most proper for the specific issues corresponding to those use cases we developed we designed and developed and and, and uh, uh, experimented three different tools the local flexibility marketplace and local uh, energy marketplace, peer-to-peer -peer energy marketplace. And uh, the, the third tool is the one that is approaching the, the virtual power plant uh, coalition uh, tool. Uh, as you can see, the focus was uh, uh, bringing the gap between the DSO and the presumer with its very relevant role is the one of the aggregators that stay in the middle because it's the one that is able to uh, to interact between DSO that has this kind of macro requirements, micro needs for the, the grid stability or for the energy balancing and uh, what are the, the actual small uh, service provider, more, small flexibility provider or energy providers that can be aggregated in order to take all the, the issues that uh, uh, we we address. Inside the, 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 the Dream project, we exploited uh, 
Fiverr uh, contacts broker IoT agent as part of the uh, mechanism for the the data near real time data uh, gathering and uh, ingestion in the system. And uh, what we realize that it's it's a system that is both gathering this data in order to feed the the algorithm algorithms that were mentioned related to the forecasting uh, for consumption for production the consumer clusterization the baseline cal baseline calculation and this kind of big data platform or any kind of data application that can leverage on those data for their uh, uh, performance indicator or optimization calculation. And on the other, other side, we uh, exploited the blockchain for the realization of the two marketplace that we mentioned for respectively the flexibility market and the energy markets. And in the, in the usage of the blockchain in particular, we exploited also the possibility to, to uh, leverage on an hybrid approach where uh, distributed databases like, for example, BigchainDB are used together with Ethereum blockchain in order to, to take all problems typical of the blockchain, like could be the, the scalability of this big amount of data. In particular, not all the data are stored in blockchain, but the, the big stream of the data is offered for the data application and part of the data or aggregation or elaboration of the data is then stored uh, in, uh, in the blockchain for the support of the marketplace that handle both the electric uh, uh, valid electric transaction, the power transaction and the value transaction, because in our concept, each action that is performed is corresponding to a value transaction that is actually transferring value between the provider and, and the consumer of the service. And so we, we are exploiting this part. The part that uh, Bright project, it's uh, uh, inheriting from the previous project, but actually extending is that uh, what we, we the, the, the focus that we think we need to explore more and expand is the part related to the consumer and in particular the community uh, consumer. And for those, uh, we, we decided to approach as digital twin model for data-driven models for the uh, identification of what could be the, the behavior of communities. Because in the previous experience, we understood that uh, there are different approaches that can rely on optimization algorithms, but uh, probably the, the, the best approach is try to also to understand which is the, the natural behavior, the, the typical behavior that this kind of prosumer can follow. And in, in these terms, the, the optimization of the system can have a kind of a hybrid approach. And uh, what we are realizing is also to extend the concept of the value I told you related to the energy services in a cross domain uh, understanding. I mean that uh, we can have value generated by the energy services or flexibility services that can be extend, uh, exchanged for services that are in different contexts in different domain like social services, for example. And in particular, we are approaching uh, three different kind of communities. The, the one that we call the typical local energy community that are geographically limited, then the one that are extending this concept in a virtual energy community where those communities are, are extending not uh, from ge geographical point of view, but are grouped according to some specific criteria. And the third one that it's actually overlapping this context with the new context and emerging context of the immobility e scenario where the hybrid community for community on the move is our concept, those batteries or those electrical vehicles, car, but we can talk about uh, flying electrical vehicles is a new scenario for the mobility and these are very, for the mobility and these are very, energy intensive activities. So we need to tackle also these aspects in order to extend. So those are the three communities where we are tackling. And this is concluding my perspective on this this work that tried to, to give you the, 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 in a nutshell, our vision of what we already experimented, which is the direction we are extending our, our work in the next period. Thank you, Vincenzo. Uh, thank you also because you are uh, with your slide you have definitely helped me bridging into the next session uh, of today uh, unfortunately i don't know if uh, uh, surely 
still with us. Maybe uh, if she is still here, she could say just a couple of words. Uh, Should it just? Yeah, I see you there. <clears throat> ah. I'm still here. <laughs> Thank Good work, so everybody. <laughs> I, I, you know, the the next thing I would really like is for all of us to have kind of a longer conversation about how all these pieces fit together and how we can support each other. I know that there is software that we have in our foundation. Um, I know that there's the Fiwer Foundation. Just joined LF Energy, and I'm hoping that we can begin to collaborate on an ontology for dig twins together. So I'm, I'm just, you know, as difficult and challenging as this time is. And I think all of us are going to have our moments where we're tired and exhausted and feel like this isn't fair and it's too hard and we can't do it. And uh, there's also so much good happening. So Vincenzo, thank you for sharing what you shared. Thank you. Uh, 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 I don't know where Christian. I I loved hearing about the work that you're doing. Really loved it. Um, it's very exciting, and I think that the ways that we could collaborate together, and um, and uh, um, Dr. Monty is. Um, somebody I adore and uh, so I know he comes next and uh, thank you thank you everybody enjoy the rest of your day and sorry that I have to leave thank you thank you Shuli thank you thank you very much uh, we love having you here yeah let's do it again soon yes absolutely absolutely and also thank you okay. for introducing our next uh, uh, speaker. I mean, I am always a little uh, in, uh, uh, find myself in, in difficult shoes when I have to introduce him. So I will keep it really simple. Uh, so uh, Antonello Monti is uh, uh, the chair of the Smart uh, Energy Mission Support Committee of the Fiber Foundation. And uh, apart uh, uh, from he, this, uh, his volunteer work uh, for the foundation, is also a member of the uh, Technical Activity Council of the Linux Foundation Energy. Uh, and uh, uh, when he dismisses these two hats, um, he is also the director of the uh, Institute for Automation of Complex Power Systems uh, within the uh, Aeon Energy Research Center at the University of Aachen. And since 2019, is also, uh, I think, co-director, if I'm not mistaken, of the uh, Digital Energy uh, Center of the Fraunhofer Institute in, uh, in Aachen. Um, Antonello and uh, uh, our uh, next two speakers uh, will be addressing uh, something that is more, I would say, uh, touching uh, the, the world of fiber. Uh, and they will be talking about uh, uh, building um, a, a, a sort of replication of reality that help, that help us predicting, that help us improve. Uh, but I'll stop here and I'll leave the floor to, to Antonello. You heard about fiber, you heard about the Linux Foundation. I want to, in this presentation, put together the two pictures and show the synergies between the two. And I want to acknowledge that I'm using some slides that surely developed, some that Juan could develop, and something I did. So I will start giving you a picture of the situation, and then I will show some also concrete example of application in, a, in a, some current research project. So if you look at the system, the, the grid management, um, we can env envisage a set of layers that define how the, the system runs. And if we go from the left to the right, we go from the more decentralized and requiring fast loop control actions to the systems that are more, um, I mean, less, less time demanding from, from the point of view of reaction, but more demanding from the point of view on computational power. And you may say what is on the left is mostly going in the direction of edge cloud. What is more on the right is going more into cloud level type of interaction. So getting more into the seconds, while on the left we have the millisecond. That builds together a quite complex picture that in different ways already 
emerge also in uh, other presentations. And that's where actually we can really build synergies because we, have, we need a variety of solutions that all combine together build the overall picture. So within the Linux Foundation, for example, we have been looking at a specific solution of automation at the edge. And that's the project we call Sonio, which is a microservice oriented architecture in which we focus on developing energy specific uh, services like state estimation, fault location identification, all uh, built in a modular way in a microservice type of uh, solution. This, the architecture can also be replicated for a distributed implementation so that these different instances of the platform can mimic the distributed fashion of the power grid. So mimicking basically the position and the location of the different substation in the power grid. But then we need to go to the higher level and bring in the things together. And um, so that's, sorry, this is just a quick reference to the LFE Energy Sonia project web page if you want to get more information. But bring it all together, this is a, the overarching picture the Linux Foundation is constantly updating to define the different projects that the Foundation is um, developing and coordinating. And if you look here, in the middle, there is a big orange block, which is about data management and data services and platform. This is not directly the scope of the Linux Foundation to develop projects that will deal with that part, but mostly, as you see also mentioned directly, um, using other solutions like Fiverr that offer a standard platform architecture and set of platform services that can be used for the data management. So the Linux Foundation is looking at all these hardcore energy type of features and then merging into a Fiverr architecture for the creation of the, the big picture. And the digital twin is a typical example of big picture because service data will be channeled into the digital twin, not only from the energy uh, system itself, but also from a variety of other sources like weather and so on. So that's where the digital twin as a system of system approach. And this is, for example, a slide from Juanjo stressing this role of the system of system to integrate different view together in what we call the digital twin representations. And that's where exactly the, the fire solution and, and the context broker play the key role to, to have an easy integration into a digital twin. Key element is then the possibility to integrate this data thanks to key standards from the data acquisition point of view, the Etsy NGSI LD, which is in the powerful API that um, Fiverr supports. And on the other hand, the other important part is the availability of smart data models. And here also within the uh, Fiverr Foundation was done a very impressive work of bringing together different data models also in the energy sector. The, the, the effort in the foundation started in other domains like smart cities or smart health, but recently a lot of different exercises have been brought together in a global picture also for the smart energy, creating a quite unique repository of of uh, data models for also for the energy sector. And here you see a little bit of that picture, how that is organized in the repository or managed by the Fiverr Foundation. And all those efforts also, and that's the other critical part to be successful, we need to be open, but also you have to be recognized as a level of a standard. And here you see, particularly when it deals with the architecture and the data management, uh, some of the key um, standard and industry bodies that recognize the fiber solution as a standard and reference implementation. Last but not least, the same is very important is also, as you probably know, if you're in this meeting, uh, recognized directly also by the European Commission within the CEP program, the Connecting European Facility, where the contact broker and the NGSILD are recognized as key building blocks. Um, here are some reference, vice versa, uh, to concrete project to complete my fast review presentation. And uh, that's uh, something we are building in a project uh, called Apparide, um, among the others, together with engineering, and building a, an architecture of digital twin 
for hybrid DC AC network. So this is a new type of uh, challenge in power systems. Uh, in the past, the power systems were based simply on alternative current, so 50 hertz type of network. More and more, the technology is moving to recognize the role of DC network. And so we need new solution to bring them together in a new, completely new algorithms. In the Hyperred project, we are really tackling this element and focusing on the integration of medium voltage and low voltage DC in the grid system. And in that context, we are developing an architecture of platforms as a cooperation between the partners. In particular, I would like to mention, already mentioned engineering, uh, but also my university at WTH and the Austin, the Austin Institute of Technology that is bringing uh, part of the solution. In particular, interesting here, the integration of some of the uh, genetic enablers coming from fiber that you see recognized in this picture, and together with other components like this Reasons platform that is um, vice versa, a component that the our partner from Austria brought to the table, and they can be uh, perfectly integrated in the overall architecture of the system. A similar architecture um, before the Hyperred project came into a previous project called FISMET, in which we were really doing the first experiment of application of the fiber architecture in a variety of use cases and testing the solution in, in a variety of field tests, uh, one in Germany, one in Sweden, one in Romania and bringing together the, the fire platform and data acquisition base also on the on the uh, on mqtt broker which makes this architecture also very similar to the architecture that is uh, used in the sonia platform so that this um, mix and interaction of solutions and that's one of the powerful points of open source that you have the chance to bring them together really uh, takes life into a complex and comprehensive architecture. Yeah, it just to complete my quick overview, the energy system are becoming fully data-driven. In this respect, digital twin are one of the most interesting applications. And we have a high level of complexity, as we heard from all of basically the presentation we had today. And the Linux Foundation and Fire creates an open and complementary ecosystem for which the rapid development of holistic solutions uh, become possible. I uh, thank you for your attention and thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, Antonello. Then I'll uh, just leave the floor to Andreas. Um, well, Andreas uh, Fechner is a is a veteran, if I may, uh, of the of the industry. Uh, he's been working for uh, big um, energy uh, companies. And since uh, uh, I think a little more than 20 years now is uh, uh, working with the CBB software in Germany, uh, where he's driving smart city initiative uh, between the others um, as part of the local business development team. Uh, Andreas, the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the um, short introduction, uh, Jean-Luca. Um, I uh, will uh, try to share my screen. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to my presentation, Connecting um, the Future. Um, today, I would like uh, to report um, on a project uh, for the sustainable heat supply of a kindergarten in Lübeck. And above all about the transparent communication of the benefits with uh, help of the IT systems, middleware, OPCSR, CBB, Libra, and Fiverr. Next slide. Um, yes. Um, a geothermal heat pump was installed in a newly built Lauerholz kindergarten in Lübeck using a combination of geothermal heat and ground cooling to uh, completely temper the building. In winter, water with a temperature of approximately 
eight degrees is taken from the ground by means of the heat pump, the temperature is increased to, uh, it, uh, it can be used to heat the building. In summer, the cold is taken from the ground and the building can be tempered by passive cooling. So in winter, we need about uh, five kilowatt of electrical power to generate 25, uh, 20, 24 uh, kilowatt of thermal power for the building. Every day, we could fill 75 bed tubes with the saving energy. And in, and in summer, only the circulation pumps are used and we generate 18 kilowatts of cooling capacity with one kilowatts of electrical power. The aim of this project is now not only to make a sustainable project, but also to show it to many people. And not just once, or once on a poster or in a newspaper, but permanently through life, da life data. We show live the energy consumption of the system the generation of heat and cold and savings of fossil fuels and carbon dioxide compared to a conventional system. This picture show a detailed um, system overview. I think you have it in uh, uh, your handouts um, after the session. We show the information not only locally in the Lauerholz kindergarten, but also via Fiverr server through the energie cluster digitalis lübeck and maybe one other spots in the future by providing a transparent view of the system's live data we believe we can increase the acceptance of sustainable solutions and provide the basis of making the right decisions hopefully the project can be an example of module and module um, of future smart cities. Our next smart city project, we will integrate our 20 LoRaWAN parking sensors in our company car park with Fiverr Broker. The long-term goal is to create a data environment for real-time and non-real-time data where any smart city project can be seamlessly integrated into the existing project infrastructure and benefit all stakeholders involved. If you, are, if you are interested in a deeper discussion um, about how to integrate multiple data sources into a smart city project using OPCSA, Fiverr, and others, 
join our digital discussion club after the closing remarks of the session to connect, discuss, and network. Um, I will start um, uh, 4.45 PM and uh, for around 30 minutes uh, to discuss. The link is uh, below. Thank you, Andreas. Thank you, Thank you but, very much for you. but, um, but uh, two uh, slides left. <laughs> OK. Thank you. First, uh, the, uh, the contact, contact data uh, in the, um, the end of uh, the slide. But I have uh, two uh, slides about uh, our uh, company. The company was founded in uh, uh, 1994, currently about um, 100 employees, five locations, and uh, we are a member of the FIGA group. And the last one. We connect any device or system secure, fast, and simple. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Andreas. And uh, Aidar is uh, ready. I see him ready. Yes, I'm trying to share my screen. So Thank please you. tell me if you can see it. So I hope yeah. everybody can see the screen. Yes, we yeah. can. Just a couple of words uh, about uh, about uh, Professor Mechit. Uh, I, Aidar and I are uh, longtime uh, friends. We've been working together on a number of projects. Um, Aidar is uh, a member of the Mission Support Committee of the uh, Fire Foundation for Smart Energy. Uh, he is also a professor at the uh, University of Applied Sciences uh, of Bochum, uh, where uh, uh, he is uh, focused on urban energy and mobility solutions. Um, in his uh, experience, there is a, a series of very relevant uh, projects uh, with uh, uh, big energy players uh, in the German market. Uh, and we are very happy to have him here, not only because he's able to share the slides uh, by himself. No, I'm just kidding. Um, Aida, the floor is yours. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So, ladies and gentlemen, um, thank you uh, for having me here, Val and uh, Gianluca. Let's just start. So, thank you for the introductory words. And, um, well, my research and development and also teaching areas are very simple in an overview. So here in Bochum, which is in the Western part of Germany, we deal with, I always call it digitized and connected energy and mobility. And one thing that I'm very happy about is that uh, related to these use cases, we are doing this with my staff members in real world labs. So one thing that I started right away with my professorship is finding out about the uh, massive potentials of fiber and um, doing some cool concepts and also projects uh, with fiber with my staff members. So one thing, and this is one of our real world labs I'm showing here is uh, the so-called in German Klima Fittelherne. You can translate it to a climate district, which consists of these seven houses you see here left from the uh, bubble and uh, what we are presenting uh, today is the idea about having a district storage. So what we've done with in Fiverr is that we installed um, some first IoT uh, related sensors. So we started with weather stations since the some radiation is relevant for PV photovoltaics um, plants. And what we did is to have a proof of concept first with uh, fiber, 
which went uh, very well. And I think the Willa Station thing is uh, one of the uh, good old examples you start first. What we did afterwards, so it's not so important what you see here, it is just the message that we've been able to connect to these pros prosumer style houses. And these are looking like this with a PV system and an IoT ready connected inverter, a battery storage system in each of these seven houses and a modern connected heating and cooling pump system. So in future, beside um, having a look into this about could that be also a local energy community? We are facing also uh, in Germany, at least um, the electric vehicle revolution. And also like Christian uh, said before, um, this will show us some further uh, projects we have to manage also for the sake of our planet. So decarbonization is our main goal. So afterwards, we want to analyze um, future use cases like having a bi-directional charging station for using, as Christian said, these batteries on four wheels. So what, but what we did, did so far, and I want to show you is that again, you see the seven prosumer homes over here, and you may see here a station, and I can tell you this is a substation since we have here um, the net, uh, the grid connection to the local DSO, which is Vestnets. And coming from high voltage, we have here the substation in the city of Herner, the part of the city is called Sodingen, where we have the medium and low voltage distribution. So right away, here, I want to highlight these seven houses. What we do have in these prosumer homes is that we have these uh, right now seven lithium ion based batteries and we have seven about also 10 kilowatt peak um, PV installations. So this is the status quo. So um, this we are also analyzing within a research project that is funded by the federal ministry for um, education and uh, research. And what we want to do is to simulate the impact of uh, district energy, energy storage and different scenarios. A third thing is once you have a larger battery, you will see this could also serve. I will come to this in my outlook, the topic of urban fast charging scenarios. So mostly you say, if you live here, you charge your car normal, let's say slowly with about 11 kilowatts or lesser overnight. But once you have a battery, you see it also from car manufacturers. They're thinking about using this huge batteries for fast charging. And then we are talking about 50 kilowatts and more up to 350 kilowatts. What is state of the art and cars like Tesla and Porsche um, can do it until 250 and 270 kilowatts. So the method we used is we have these three scenarios. The first one is the status quo. We have larger batteries in each house. So we then analyzed um, what about having smaller batteries within the houses, simulating this on and our basis was the real world data that we have collected via fiber you've seen before. And these smaller energy storages collaborate with a larger residential, we call it a residential energy storage. The first scenario was the simulation of having no batteries at all in these prosumer houses, but every house is connected to a large sized district storage. Again, 70 kilowatt hours. And this goes along with the seven times 10 kilowatt peak PV plants on the rooftop. So what we've seen is since this is, and I want to show you the potential of uh, doing this kind of research database, you can use for ex example, fireware. 
But if you look also uh, the economic value, we've been able to identify some business potentials for your local utilities. Like this example was built up and it has been done research before us with the local utility, the Stadtwerke Herne in the city. So first of all, you can see, and if you do it as a local utility, so this is the message to the other ones, is that you can serve prosumers with services. Like you can think into leasing. Surely have been talking from California and we have their nice examples where you just lease your PV and the battery and even you are able to lease a car. So cutting costs for the prosumer of the future without dealing about regularity is one thing that could be a new source of revenue for local utilities. And also, last but not least, the thing about fast charging. There is also a possibility to serve these um, batteries and their power and their uh, reaction time for remuneration services, for instance, to avoid peak loss, since in Germany, companies pay uh, regarding their maximum load um, they will realize. Another thing which I would like to point out is a very hypothetical thinking um, to offer grid services to DSO, TSO, but this is something I think, especially in Germany, where you have to go a long way on the regulatory uh, side. So last but not least, as Christian also pointed out, the thing is all is all about data and how it is analyzed. So collecting data with fiber technologies will enable you to utilize analysis and data, not only for private households, but also for entire city districts and also the, so the energy intensive companies, like in the areas where I live, where we had former but also still have energy intensive companies, for instance, the steel making or other companies like that. So further development we want to um, undertake is once we got that data now is to further develop our prediction and forecasting methods. So the conclusion is about there is a positive um, potential for going into this local energy communities. I've shown you the different uh, stakeholders that you can serve. And we think that the number of households and districts can use this uh, economic efficiencies also in the face of climate change and the ongoing beside electric vehicle demand, the cooling demand. So thank you for your uh, at, um, attention. And I would like to pass over again to Gianluca. Aidar, thank you very much. Um... We've been working together on some very intriguing initiatives, and I think that uh, this is not finished yet, so we will have much more to do together. And I uh, really wanted to thank uh, all the speakers from Shuli to Andreas uh, to Christian to Haider, Vincenzo, and uh, Antonello, our chair at the Smart Energy MSc in the Fiber Foundation. I think that uh, the last words of Antonello about cooperation are really the ones that are making the difference and will be making the difference uh, in the near future. Uh, once again, thanks uh, to, to all the speakers. Thanks to all of you who have been uh, participating. Uh, thanks to Val and Max uh, for the coordination and the organization. And uh, uh, stay connected. Uh, follow us on our social media, the Fiber Foundation. We have plenty of interesting events where usually we have less problems with the, our uh, uh, platforms. Um, but uh, a, a warm thank you from my end, uh, and uh, Antonello if, and Val, if you want to say something to the uh, people who's been uh, bearing with us, uh, uh, considering also our delay, please say something. Yeah, well, I would like to, uh, first of all, say a massive thank you to you, Gianluca, for moderating this session. 
Um, we are very grateful to have such a committed group of people here. They are, like you said, doing this work on a voluntary basis. And we know, and Professor Antonello and Haider, Massimo Bertoncini, who is also a member of the Mission Support Committee and cannot be here today due to his vaccine appointment. Uh, we are very grateful to you, the four of you, for all the work you do. And I also want to extend my uh, thank you my thank you to the speakers here today. So truly who has left us and is an, is an absolutely pleasure every single time. Christian, the same goes for you. We we adore you. We, we love the work you do. It's always a pleasure to have you with us. Uh, Gianluca, again, no, no words to express our gratitude. And to the newcomers today, such as Andreas and Vincento, I think it's the very first time we have you guys in an energy event. So uh, my most sincere thank you, Haider. You are no... Um, you are very known to our community, so it's always a pleasure to have you back with us as well. And uh, here is our detail. So, you know, um, if you want to know more about Fireware, we have dropped most of the links uh, in the chat. Uh, but if you want to know more about us and you wanted to engage with our speakers, please, please just go to the lounge area and I hope Professor Antonello and Haida will be able to stay there with us for a couple of minutes. So if you have a specific question or you just want to meet such a stellar uh, speaker lineup, so please just join us now, go to the lounge. And my most sincere thank you to the attendees. Thanks for staying with us. And we hope to see you at the upcoming sessions uh, at the Fireware Smart Fest. It's just day one. We have much, much more to come. Have a good afternoon, you all. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.